Greetings fellow painters! This video is a twofer, where we're continuing our OSL hack series with a simple OSL trick, as well as demonstrating an easy way to paint yellow over black primer. We're going to paint the entire model here, but you can find timestamps for both of these techniques down below. This week, we're taking things up a notch by eliminating dry brushing and speed paints altogether, but this is still very much a cheating approach to OSL. If you prefer a more subtle OSL glow and don't mind putting in a little extra time, you can check out this video where we create an orange backlight glow using an airbrush on a Zombie Hulk miniature. Or if you're a card-carrying member of the Airbrush Gestapo, you can check out our Black Goat of the Woods video where we create a similar look using only a standard brush. But if all that seems like too much work and you don't mind a little cheating, then you are in the right place. Welcome to Trehane Miniatures. Beginning with a miniature that has been primed in black, we take some dark orange paint and primer in one and spray one side of the miniature to establish the base for our orange OSL effect. Here I'm using Rust-Oleum Rustic Orange. I start each spray with the nozzle directed away from the miniature and quickly sweep past the miniature, finishing with the spray away from the miniature. This is one of the best ways to avoid the speckling that can occur from a partially depressed nozzle, which happens most often as the nozzle is initially pressed or released. I'm aiming the spray from a slightly top-down angle as I do this, basically from the direction where I envision the orange light is emanating. Using a very dark gray paint, I'm proceeding with a layering approach to painting the parts of the model that aren't receiving OSL. I want all of the cloth portions of this character suit to be gray, so that they do not detract from the armored parts that will be painted later with yellow. This dark gray is applied in two thin coats to build up the opacity, but the deepest recesses will just get one coat so that they stay nice and dark. Switching to a medium gray, we begin building up the highlights on the cloth. On the character's belly, I draw each stroke from the bottom of his belly where there would be more shadow and finish the stroke at the top of the belly where it's receiving more light. On the pants, I'm focusing only on the raised folds in the cloth. Next, I use a light gray to add some final highlights to the engineer's clothing. I don't want to take these highlights beyond this ash gray color because I don't want them to draw attention away from the more interesting features of the model. This guy has some much cooler stuff going on than his big old belly. These highlights will just be present on the upper part of the engineer's stomach, the top of his left shoulder, and his right knee. And now for the fun of painting yellow over black primer, which is just as easy as painting brown over black primer, because that's exactly how we're going to start. This is not a cheat or a speed painting hack for painting yellow over black. This is simply an easy to replicate process for painting fantastic looking yellows when starting from a black primer. For this model, I'm using chocolate brown for the base layer of the yellow armor. I'm basically starting with the color that I want to be the deepest shadow color for the yellow armor. Rather than struggling with a solid yellow base coat over black followed by a shade wash, then highlighting, I start with the shadow color and build up to the yellow in layers. I find this so much easier and more enjoyable than the typical base shade highlight approach to painting because I don't have to worry about complete opacity with each layer like I would if I was trying to base coat with yellow from the start. With each following layer of color, I cover less area on each component of the armor. In addition to the armor, we're also going to base the leather belt and the rag hanging from the engineer's waist. I'm choosing clear orange as a secondary shadow color for the yellow armor. Each layer in this process becomes faster and easier than the previous layer. We no longer have to concern ourselves with painting right up to the adjoining features or into deep recesses. Any lack of opacity in this coat will read as a natural blend into the darker shadow area. The orange and brown shadow layers will ultimately create a more gritty looking final yellow color that will be perfect for the dark sci-fi setting of this game. Let's use one of the finest yellow paints available on the market for our mid-tone yellow, the original formula Demonic Yellow by the Army Painter. Smartass comments aside, I really do like the look of Demonic Yellow as a color, and the ease with which this paint builds upon the shadow layers is a testament to the effectiveness of this layering process. You actually don't have to use browns and oranges for your shadow colors. You could try using a mix of purples and pinks for a more vibrant yellow, or maybe try a burnt red and a bright orange for something more middle ground. Demonic Yellow is a bright enough yellow that we could stop here and have a great looking miniature, but I want to enhance the highlights a little more along the edges of the armor plates and helmet. Moving on to Moondust by the Army Painter, I increase the intensity of the yellow highlights on the model. This highlight is going to be a little more than just an edge highlight as I apply it to the outer surfaces of each section of the armor. I'm also adding this highlight to some upward facing areas that would catch the most light, like the upper arm, 
the helmet, and some parts of the boots. To finish off the yellow highlights, we'll edge highlight with ice yellow. This is going to be focused mostly around the upper torso and head, including the metal plates on the engineer's chest, the helmet, and his shoulder. I'm also going to edge highlight some items of interest, like the contraptions he is holding in both hands and that very prominent knee pad on his right knee. And that's it for the yellow. For the visible flesh on the engineer's face and arms, I'm using a pretty basic dark flesh recipe consisting of whole red, orange brown, and ice yellow all by Vallejo. I'm thinning the paint so that I can apply the paints in fairly translucent layers. This ensures that I get a smooth transition between colors without the need for glazing. I first base coat all of the flesh with whole red, paying attention to the left side of the face and left arm to make sure that I don't accidentally cover any of the orange foundation that is in place to designate where we want the orange OSL. As of late, I'm finding that I prefer skin recipes that don't include any paints that are labeled as flesh colors. By forcing myself to look at the color of the paint rather than the label, I'm creating skin colors that are more interesting and more in line with what I have envisioned. As I layer up these paints, I mix each new color with the previous color and apply a couple of layers before moving on to using the color on its own. Each new layer that I apply covers a little less area than the previous layer, ultimately resulting in some fairly smooth transitions between colors. I'm paying attention to the direction from where I want the bright light emanating, and I highlight the features of the model appropriately. The light is coming from the model's upper left, so I'm placing the brightest highlights on the engineer's upper left cheek, the tip of the nose, and his fingers that are wrapped around the handle of his weapon. This also means that I will leave some dark shadows present under his jawline and the bottom front of his left forearm near the elbow. The end result is some reasonably natural looking skin. Next up, we use some gunmetal metallic paint to quickly paint up the cabling that is attached to the contraption on the engineer's right arm, the bracelet he is wearing on his left arm, and his nipple buttons. Nothing too fancy here, but I'm allowing some of the darker underpainting to still show through in the crevices. The engineer's belt and oil rag are highlighted first with some monster brown, followed by a mix of monster brown and ice yellow. For the oil rag, I focus these highlights on the raised folds in the cloth. On the belt, in addition to edge highlighting the upward facing edge, I'm using these highlight colors to add some texture and scratches to the surface of the belt. As promised, we're taking the OSL up a notch on this mini by applying the OSL highlights in a more deliberate manner than we did with the previous two Nemesis heroes. No dry brushing here. Using a pure white acrylic paint, we pick out all of the features of the model that are reflecting the orange backlight, highlighting everything within the orange layer that we established at the beginning of the painting process. It may be tempting just to hit all of the edge highlights in this step, but we need to go beyond that and apply highlights to the larger volumes as well, such as the top of the helmet and the cylindrical shapes of the upper arm and thigh. I'm also going to highlight areas on the ground on both sides of the model that I feel would be interacting with the surrounding OSL. Once these white highlights are in place, I use clear orange, thin to a glaze consistency, and brush it over the highlighted details. It may take two coats of thinned paint to achieve the desired glow, but we want to avoid painting with too opaque of a paint and risk destroying the highlights altogether. As an optional step, I go back to the white acrylic paint, and this time I just quickly highlight the most prominent edges within the orange OSL glow, and a smaller portion of the top of the helmet. I do this so I can follow up with some fluorescent orange ink that I have on hand to really intensify some of the orange effect, and I'm pretty happy with the results. The final touch that I'm adding to this miniature is a blue bounce light on the front side of the model. I glaze some muted turquoise ink on the ground in front of the engineer. Then I apply this ink to the underside of key features of the model that I think would also receive this light. I'm mainly focusing on the underside of his belly, the silver components of his chest plate, and under his jawline. I'll also place this in other folds and shadows to darken them, though the blue won't be as obvious in these locations. I'm not really sure how much I like the blue effect on this model, but it does tie the piece in with the other models from this game. And that wraps up the Engineer from the Nemesis board game. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to join our growing community of painters.